This is the prayer that triggered atheists across the United States. Prayer will be offered by the guest chaplain, Pastor Jack Hibbs, Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, Chino, California. Let's pray. Almighty God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, together we come before you in humility as a people in need of your forgiveness, your mercy, your goodness, and your grace. For these 250 so years, our fathers in this Congress have prayed for your guidance and protection. And so we stand here in humble petition that you today might do the same. That this nation and its unparalleled constitution, your great gift to all freedom-loving people, might be renewed here and across this land as a beacon of hope to all who seek peace. I ask you today, Father, to bring to us a great awakening of righteousness and confidence in you, who alone is mighty to save. Hear my cry in this hour of great need that we might be humbly blessed before you in the repentance of our national sins. You, Almighty God, are the source of all wisdom, and there is no wisdom but that which comes from you. So please come upon those here who are the stewards over the business of our nation with your wisdom, which comes from above, and with your holy fear, knowing that your coming day of judgment draws near when all who have been and are now in authority will answer to you, the great judge of heaven and of earth, for the decisions that they make here in this place. I offer this prayer to you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Son, your Son, and our crucified Savior and resurrected Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have you ever wondered why atheists could be mad at something they don't believe in? If God is not real and is just a fairy tale or some imagination Christians make up in their minds, why are atheists triggered when Christians pray in public to something they don't believe exists? This should tell you who is behind atheism, Satan himself. Satan hates truth, he knows there is power in prayer, and that's why he fights Christians so hard to pray less, which makes them powerless. If prayer was so important to the incarnate Son of the living God, then how much more important should prayer be to us? How much more should we depend upon prayer? Jesus lived a life of prayer. That's the first thing I want you to see. In Luke 5.16 it says, But Jesus Himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray. Isn't it a crime? That Jesus Christ and the labor of the kingdom seems almost to be work that we want to slip away from. Listen to the following statements from the Freedom From Religion Foundation, and it becomes evident that this group is working on behalf of Satan, whether they know it or not. Prayer by Christian nationalist pastor debases U.S. House. How did the wonderful prayer you just heard debase the U.S. House? The group went on to state, The Freedom From Religious Foundation is protesting the reprehensible invitation by the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, to a Christian nationalist pastor, known for aggressive hostility to the core American principle of separation between church and state, to open the U.S. House. The atheist group also called Pastor Jack Hibbs a vengeful zealot. The direction America is headed is terrifying. The same secular, humanistic atheist group is fighting not only to ensure American kids do not learn anything about God or prayer at schools, but also has initiated several school programs across the United States aimed at making kids atheists while they are young. And today, there's a new program that has been trying to take hold in our schools. Satan Clubs. The club promotes activities centered around the seven fundamental tenets of Satanism. Thankfully, many parents are fighting back. Memphis Shelby County school leaders and clergy stand together opposing a satanic club that plans to hold an after-school meeting inside a public school building. 
Antelope Valley residents protest against a self-proclaimed satanic temple holding an after-school book club event targeting children. We don't need the enemy here in Jesus' mighty name. We represent Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. We're here uh, to take part in the after-school Satan Club. Surrounded by members of the clergy, Memphis Shelby County school leaders added their voices to what has become a public outcry over a satanic club using school facilities for a meeting. I want to assure you that I do not endorse, I do not support the beliefs of this organization at the center of the recent headlines. So I can't go in the school building and, and, and pray, but yet we can rent a facility to the Satanic Temple and they can give a party for our children. It's ridiculous, it's absurd. SES has failed our children, and I say they failed them because they would rather dodge a lawsuit than actually protect our kids because this is going to spread like wildfire if, it, if they able to get into one school how many other schools are they plotting to do unquestionably america is at a crossroads this was truly when parents showed up um it had a record turnout parents in opposition were the majority turnout um overwhelming majority turnout when we're discussing Satan clubs in our public schools, we are failing our children. We are failing our children. Um, these are frightening images. It's a frightening ideology. Um, it's, it's, it's the responsibility of the adults in the room yeah. to stand up and speak up for the parents. We have to do better. Lucian Greaves. All right, Lucian. If Satan is Good evil, I thought. Jesse. Nice to meet you, too. If Satan's evil, why should kids be in an evil club? Well, obviously, we don't view Satan as evil, and it really doesn't matter to us what your mythology is surrounding Satan. If we want to see things around again for America, Christians in this country must do three things. First, pray for America. We must stand in the gap and seek the face of God for this great nation. America needs to repent and turn to Jesus. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Second Chronicles 7, verse 14. It is a privilege to be heard by God. And I mean, just to be heard by God is a privilege. That in and of itself is a privilege. I'm not saying it's a privilege to be heard by God when God does what you've asked God to do. That's not what I said. What I said was it's a privilege just to be heard by God. If you never get another affirmative answer to prayer, God's been better to you than you deserve just by hearing you when you pray. God is upholding the universe by the power of his might. And yet... God hears us. Think about that. He flung the stars into space and he upholds them and sustains them. The entire universe is being upheld and sustained by our God. He's busy, people. And yet he hears us. It's a privilege. We are sinful, insignificant creatures in the grand scheme of things. And yet God hears us. And besides that, as his children, he does hear us when we pray. Amen? We must remember that it is a comfort to be heard by God. Not just a privilege. It's a, it's a great comfort to be heard by God. Through prayer, we have communion with the Most High God. This is communion with God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you're with me. God hears you. God's with you. Your prayers are being heard. Don't forget that. Second, Christians in America must be bold about their faith in Jesus. The more we keep our faith private and fear what the enemy would do if we speak up publicly, the more Satan gains the upper hand. We should be as loud and bold as the groups that want to stamp out Christianity in America, but we must do so with love, which leads to the third point. We must reflect the light of Jesus Christ by loving even the unlovable. Jesus commands us in John 15, verse 14, to love others as he has loved us. Christians should follow in the footsteps of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by showing love to everyone, especially those who oppose us. This is my commandment, Jesus said, that ye love one another as I have loved you. 
John 15, verse 12. Also, in Matthew 22, Jesus tells us that the second greatest commandment is to love our neighbors. May the Lord empower us to pray for our America and nations of the earth, share the gospel with unbelievers, and let Jesus love sinners through us. Amen. Please help us spread biblical truth. Subscribe, like, and share. God bless you.